everybody, Mike Burkholder, Contra Costa today. I've got Gary Arston and Tony Van Gore of Delta Breeze Broadcasting. How are you gentlemen doing today? Doing well, Mike. Very well. Good Thank to see you. you. Good. I wanted to do a, a kind of different type of show today and, and go into some background about a new radio station in Contra Costa County, KLSN, and just kind of go over the history and some of the controversy going on right now. Gary and uh, Tony were very instrumental in bringing this channel out to Oakley Brentwood area. Uh, Tony, for you, I know you wanted a community radio station and you put in a, a ton of time a few years ago mm -hmm. and you were operating on a really short uh, window. Yeah. And what's going on today is there's been a lot of controversial because a radio antenna was placed. I, I, I don't know if I legally is the right word, but it probably is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Difficult for me to describe that circumstance. I, I, I'm not fam uh, completely familiar with what uh, uh, happened with that uh, because, again, I wasn't involved in it. Uh, but way back in 2010, uh, the federal government and President Obama uh, actually saw fit to try to reassign frequencies uh, that were being unused in suburban areas, in rural areas. Uh, to uh, community organizations uh, to, uh, to essentially uh, uh, be the voice of a, of a community, to be the voice of an interest, uh, actually to, to serve underserved areas in radio that, that really didn't have a radio station of their own. This was the Local Community Radio Act of 2010. Uh, I heard about it uh, and uh, thought, you know, uh, there are, are roughly 120,000 people uh, in the immediate East Bay area and there's no radio broadcast service at here at all other than uh, what we can get to from, from outlying towns, from Vacaville, from Stockton and the like. Uh, it would be very, very uncommon to hear anything about Brentwood News, to hear anything about Oakley News, uh, on anything, uh, any radio broadcast media whatsoever. So uh, I, I thought, well, what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get a frequency for Oakley and Brentwood. It took a lot of work. Uh, we had to put together a business plan. We had to actually develop a nonprofit organization of our own Correct. to to manage that, and, and that's where Delta Breeze Broadcasting came from. And who did you work with during that time period? Worked with Gary. Uh, Gary was, was very, very uh, instrumental with that. Uh, and actually, a, a group of six people, we called ourselves a dirty half dozen. Uh, and and we, we got together uh, on pretty much a weekly basis, uh, and, and more frequently if necessary. Uh, to put together various elements of the station, to put together what the board of directors might look like, put together what the station management uh, might look like. Uh, and uh, we worked hard. Not only did we do that, but also we went to a local community organizations. We went to the chambers of commerce. We went to the city councils. We went to the school districts. You were everywhere. We went everywhere uh, to, to try to promote this. And we found, uh, actually, Mike, the... Uh, uh, local community reception to this was very good. Uh, well, it's about time <laughs> that that Oakley and Brentwood got a radio station and 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 uh, and did something to to really give the community a voice, to really give us some some local presence, to really to really talk about what's happening around here. Um, the uh, requirement of the FCC, however, was that uh, uh, any nonprofit organization that actually held the construction permit that we needed to build the station needed to be in existence for two years. Uh, and we had to create a new one, and that's where Delta Breeze Broadcasting came from. But we needed some organization to hold the license or hold the construction permit, if you will, for mm -hmm. a couple years until Delta Breeze had been in existence long enough to be able to carry it itself. Uh, Jim Frazier uh, at the time uh, was uh, extremely, extremely helpful with a nonprofit that he had created uh, called uh, the Friends of Oakley Community Foundation. And the Friends of Oakley Community Foundation, under Jim Frazier's leadership, uh, agreed to hold the uh, construction permit once we got it uh, for two years until Delta Breeze Broadcasting uh, could, could hold it itself and actually uh, be the board of directors of KLSM. And so here you are three years later, still no. <laughs> well, uh, here, uh, actually, what kind of happened there? We're 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 we're, go we're going back a ways. Uh, uh, Delta Breeze Broadcasting uh, became a corporation uh, back in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, uh, around the time that we got the construction permit from the FCC, February 4th. I remember the day, uh, and we worked hard uh, after that uh, to again 
uh, try to raise community interest. We talked to the school systems. Uh, we actually uh, uh, got quite a bit of cooperation and, and quite a bit of help from uh, Freedom uh, High School yeah. uh, to help yeah. us with that, to help us. And you guys uh, actually had a, an agreement to put an antenna on Freedom High School? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, everything was signed. Everything was, was legal. Everything was cleared with everybody uh, to, to be able to get that accomplished. Uh, and uh, uh, again, we, we were kind of limited. Uh, uh, when the frequency for KLSN uh, 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 when it was allotted, there was only a narrow strip of land, actually, that could hold uh, uh, a station that it wouldn't interfere with others in, in the area. Freedom High School uh, and uh, their cell tower was right in the middle of that. Uh, and so uh, we, we talked to the school system, we talked to the superintendent, and, and their support was, was outstanding. And uh, we were rolling down the road at that time. And that would have hit Brentwood, Oakley, and Discovery Bay? Right. Um, there, there is a, a map called a contour map that, that says quite a bit about uh, the strength of a signal uh, that could uh, penetrate walls and, and really have good uh, coverage. Uh, these uh, radio stations under the Local Community Radio Act uh, could only have 100 watts worth of power, and, and uh, I think there's there's many times that in the lights that are glaring on us right now. <laughs> we try. <laughs> with, with, with respect to that. Blame Michael Pohl. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and so uh, not a very, very strong uh, signal, certainly not a strong stereo signal. But what we found out uh, was that uh, it was strong enough to actually go uh, to the east part of Antioch at the time, all the way over to Discovery Bay, all the way to South Brentwood, and then uh, actually uh, across the uh, San Joaquin and, and uh, Sacramento River to, to some degree. We thought, hey, that's perfect. That's exactly the area that needs a radio station. That's exactly the area that we wanted to serve. So you get that agreement. What happens? <laughs> we got the agreement from the Liberty Union School District, and you know it was kind of baffling to us because we were continuing with our meetings, doing our community outreach, and our board of directors for Delta Breeze Broadcasting, whose name is Bill Woods, we had had some conversations with who is now the project manager at KLSN, his name is Chris Ponzano. Um, he was going out and representing KLSN in a manner that we were not happy with, and Bill actually told Chris to cease and desist. Yeah, the, uh, uh this, this was always designed from the very, very, very inception of KLSN not to be a money-making organization, not to be a, not to be a, a profit uh, organization, because, again, uh, it was never uh, our, our, our need or desire to make money from this sure. thing. Um, uh, and, and actually, the FCC that, that's was... That's non-profit. Yeah, it's, it's a non-profit. <laughs> it's not supposed to. Uh, it, 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 certainly, uh, if something like this grew in size uh, and, and there was a need to employ people, we, that, that could be done. But the main intent was to serve the community, and it was not was not at all to make money off, off advertisers sure. in town and like because it can't. Uh, we began to get the feeling, though, uh, that uh, the in intent uh, uh, certainly that, that we were beginning to sense uh, was, was not in that direction. And, and that, that and that's what I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's when it was kind of not really solid with us as far as the the support that we were getting from the friends of Oakley because. At one meeting, Chris popped up, and this was after he was instructed not to be going out and representing us, was taking the position as if he was going to change the direction of our station. And it is my belief that between Chris, Kevin Romick, and the Friends of Oakley, they had probably met on the side and had some type of an agreement that at that point he was going to give the, they were going to give the leadership back to Chris. Yeah. And that was not our intent. There was a meeting that was held. Uh, uh, we, we had periodic meetings for KLSN and uh, Delta Breeze Broadcasting. There was a meeting that was held back in November of 2014 that was actually very pivotal. Uh, uh, at the time, uh, uh, of course, I was uh, uh, working full time. I, I had a full time position uh, with, with a, a health care organization. Uh, and I was dealing with some health issues myself. Uh, and uh, the burden was becoming very, very overwhelming for me uh, to, to, to carry on like that. And I actually uh, uh, approached uh, uh, the board of directors who had attended this meeting uh, for some assistance. You know, well, let's, uh, uh, let, let's get a national uh, uh, consultant in. 
Um, I joined the, uh, the National Federation of Community Broadcasters uh, to help me get guidance to develop this radio station, and they were immensely, immensely helpful. Um, uh, one of their uh, uh, main consultants was Donna DiBianco, uh, DiBianco uh, who uh, actually uh, uh, had been assisting me all along, giving me guidance as to how to do this right. She had, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe tens and dozens of radio stations that she helped to start, so, just like this. So from her advice, was there things that the radio station here was doing that they shouldn't be doing? Uh, not not specifically, but there were there were some additional things uh, that uh, that that she was saying about uh, uh, about community outreach, uh, about uh, getting the community more involved. She had some suggestions. Overall, uh, she was very very encouraging, saying the radio station, as uh, as, as as Gary and I and uh, the Dirty Half Dozen were developing it, was was being done perfectly. Everything was being done right. The, the business plan was being done correctly. Uh, the, the, the programming schedule that we were developing uh, was, was done uh, precisely correctly. She uh, wanted to get more involved to help us with uh, the community outreach and actually getting things going. We also had help uh, from an organization called uh, uh, Nexus Communications uh, to uh, put together, if you will, a radio station in a box. Sure. Uh, uh, back at that time, back at that time, uh, there were a number of companies that actually had all the equipment for a radio station just essentially packaged sure. that we could buy. Uh, and, and, and I was just about ready to do it. But I wanted, I, I, I wanted, the, I wanted the community to, to contribute to this, you know, not, not necessarily my own resources, but uh, had we done that, uh, I know that uh, 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 the, the person who is the, the, the present programming uh, director uh, of KLSN said, well, I can get this radio station on, on the air in, in two weeks. Actually, we could have. We could have instead of the two, uh, or the two years and, and three months, two years and four yeah. months that it actually took him. Uh, we, we, were, we were down that pathway and we were that close. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, the, but the burden became very, very difficult for me to handle. Uh, and, uh, and actually uh, what I had done is I had approached the board of directors for help. Uh, and their response was not ex not at all, Gary. What I expected. No, it was it, the decision had already been made, in my opinion. Uh, one of the things that I would like to make very aware to the community is, in this whole process of getting the construction permit, anything that we had to do that was a financial burden, all came from to Dr. Tony Van Gore's pocket. Never once did the Friends of Oakley or Chris Ponzano or anybody else outside of our group put any money towards the construction of this radio station. It was all on Tony. And when this whole process was yanked out from underneath us, never once did Tony get a thank you. Never once did he get an offer for to be compensated for the funds that he put out. It was just made aware that Tony had basically volunteered his time and money. And that is, in my opinion, completely wrong. So. So at that point, you guys had that meeting, and the direction had changed. And then what, from my understanding, lawyers were involved? Yes. Tony had hired an attorney, and I'll let him expand on that. Well, uh, what, what happened uh, is that the board of directors of uh, uh, the Friends of Oakley actually had a number of choices they could make uh, as to where the radio station would go. My, my preference to them was that uh, uh, Donna DiBanco uh, and uh, her, uh, her organization could help us, uh, that we actually have her come in and, and give me additional advice as to who to reach out to and the like and, and how to generate more community interest in the radio station. Uh, uh, the Friends of Oakley, though, uh, uh, among the options that they had, chose to say, well, Tony, you're out of it. Uh, you're gone. Uh, we're going to give the, uh, the project manager uh, position to uh, this Mr. Chris Ponsano, uh, who had no radio experience against my 15 years uh, in uh, in broadcasting and, and being on the board of directors. Uh, so who made that decision, the Kevin Romick or the board as a whole? Um, they, they made it in a meeting that was held after uh, the, the meeting that we had. Uh, I, wasn't, uh, I, was, I wasn't in attendance at that meeting. How that actually came about uh, should be uh, in, in their records, but uh, the decision, they, they sent me a letter afterwards saying, uh, 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 turn over all your resources, uh, you're out of it. It's not very nice. Well, um, uh, the, 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 thing, the thing is that, that typically speaking, and, and this is something that happens in the industry too, and I know the industry because I worked in the industry, 
that if you get a radio construction permit or if you get a license, it doesn't make any difference uh, if, if you're working a nonprofit and the like. There is real money that is spent. There is real time that is spent to do that. It is customary in the radio business, if you get that and somebody else wants it or takes it, that you be compensated for it in some way. In, 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 in some way. Uh, uh, it shocked me. It shocked me that the Friends of Oakley uh, uh, said, all right, uh, even though even though you got the construction permit, even though you put in all this time and resource, you can't have it. We're giving it to him. Uh, uh, and, and again, it was against the custom uh, in, in the industry uh, to provide some, some type of, uh, of, of recognition, some type of appreciation, uh, and, and usually in the business some type of compensation for that. But for you, it's not about the money and the recognition. You, your ultimate goal was to make a community radio station and... I kind of want to use this word like a legacy to the community. Yes, yes. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't need to make money off a radio station. I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted the community to have a voice. Uh, I, I, I've lived in the Oakland or in, in the Oakley community and in the, in the Brentwood community now for the better part of 13 years. And, and there's no voice here. There, there, there's nothing that uh, that allows people to say what they're thinking real time and be heard, and that's what I wanted, and that's what we're not getting. Sure. And the dream was taken away. I, one of the things that I would like to talk about is, you know, Tony put himself through college working at radio stations back in the Midwest, and when he came out here, his dream was to start this radio station up and just basically give a gift to the local community of Oakley and Brentwood, and. I can't tell you, as a friend of Tony's and, and a partner of him through this process, it was devastating to him sure. to have this thing just stolen from him in a manner of speaking. Yeah. And, and so all this three-year, four-year buildup has kind of come ahead this last week or two yeah. with the illegal antenna placement, uh, disgruntled employees finally coming forward, yeah. accusations that they won't show the books to the public. You know, elected officials involved. Um, we were talking kind of off off the record earlier. Um, and when I say off the record, we weren't recording at the time. Um, about elected officials involved in community radio. Yeah. Well, the FCC has an extremely dim view with politicians being involved in media sources. Period. And with this being said, you know, the Friends of Oakley took it upon themselves to take over and give the leadership of the, the radio station project to Chris. And we warned at the time, Tony and I met with Donna Logano and Kevin Romick of the involvement. It is, it is incumbent upon everybody to be aware that the Friends of Oakley are responsible for anything that is done with who represents that radio station since they are currently the holders of that license. Yeah. What, well, what? I, I just want to hit on a couple more things. Sure, go ahead, please. Um, please yes. With the antenna being placed at what, it, what we're being told is American Tower, um, it is the knowledge that we have that there was a security gate surrounding that. Um, Chris Ponzano, from the, what the article stated, had the access code to that gate. One of the questions I have is, how did Chris get that code to gain access to the tower if he's the one that went in and put it on, and who did he get it from? It's, or a volunteer. Yeah, and it's my understanding that the mayor of Antioch, whose name is Sean Wright, and the city council member of Oakley, who is also the president of the Friends of Oakley, is Kevin Romick, who are both politicians. And related. And they're related, are not supposed to be involved in media outlets. I think there's, an, there's a need for an investigation, both into Sean and to Kevin, to find out their involvement in the planning process of taking this radio station away and possibly look into what corrupt dealings may have taken place. Not only in that respect, uh, but an investigation as to uh, the fundamental idea behind KLS and what it was supposed to be and what it turned out to be. Since the time that, that, uh, that Chris was given the uh, uh, project managership in 2014 till the time that he actually came on the air on uh, January what was the 28th of, of 2017, uh, I had stayed in contact with him for a while and, and, and received updates from him, although he uh, sometimes very begrudgingly gave them. He finally told me, uh, uh, Tony, um, I don't want you uh, being involved in this radio station at all. I don't want you to talk to my staff. I don't want you to see the inside of my facility. I don't want you to come to our, my meetings. This is my radio station. Uh, and I'm going to uh, be putting on the shelf the concept of community radio uh, in, in this radio station. 
I, I, I'd like to develop it into a sports station. I'd like to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, uh, tell advertisers, not, not underwriters, but advertisers downtown, well, you know something, uh, I've got uh, uh, this, this, this great radio station uh, that, that you can advertise on. Uh, sounds to me, uh, uh, what he did essentially uh, was, was leave the concept of community radio and make this more into a, a commercial FM station, and, and many of those I've worked for before. But that wouldn't fall under the FCC's ri original approval? No, no, not, uh, and, and, and that, 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 that's, Gary brought up some, some wonderful points about, uh, about what's happening with the antenna and the like and, and, and FCC uh, rules compliance and the like, but, the, but a huge fundamental issue also is that this is not supposed to be a sports radio station. This is not supposed to be something that, ex that goes after uh, advertisers downtown to put money in. This is something su that the community was supposed to support. This is something that the community was supposed to have some vested interest in. This was something that the community needed to have a voice in. From the time it went on the air in January of 2017, what have we heard about the community? What, what community involvement has there been? Uh, they, they, they brought on two very talented women to do a couple hours uh, in the morning several times a week, but uh, in, listening, yeah, in, 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 in listening, what, 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 what we, we were supposed to have six to eight hours a day, according to FCC rules, of, of community-based broadcasting every year, and, and we, we, we barely got a few moments. Uh, and, and, and again, we're talking, we're, we're talking three and a half years down, maybe three and a half years down the road uh, of, of when, we, when we got this all started. Plenty of time to get this going, to bring the community in, to get the community to support yeah. it, and, I and it never happened. And I know for Gary, um, you were very passionate about bringing on a, a Hispanic segment each day or week or? Yeah, well, you know, it was in the planning stages, and Tony talks about community involvement, and, and also when he mentioned the dirty half dozen, if you will, the six individuals that we had together to kind of brainstorm what we were going to do. Um, and I reached out for Alex Valdez. Alex is uh, a very involved member of the Oakley community. He was Hispanic, and he had a conversation with Chris Ponzano some, I don't know, two years ago or thereabouts, wanting to initiate the, the opportunity to create a Hispanic broadcast uh, station or show for, for Oakley and Brentwood. And Chris told him, and I am quoting Chris through Alex, that there will be no Hispanic broadcasting at KLSN as long as I'm in charge. And I just thought that was completely disturbing. And like Tony has stated, that it's going against everything that we wanted sure. in the way of representing our community. In, in, in all this, I, um, uh, I, I take no pleasure, uh, Mike, I, I take no pleasure in, in, in the fact that KLSN is having problems right now, that, that this controversy is taking place. Ultimately speaking, what, I, what I'd like to see out of this is, is that uh, the, community the community radio station is returned to the community, that KLSN be given the opportunity again to develop its own board of directors uh, uh, based uh, on, uh, on community interest with community people involved in it, maybe some radio professionals, and there's a lot of them around here. A lot. Uh, to, to, to get into this, uh, to actually steer the station back to what it was supposed to be, to what the FCC actually approved it to be, not to what it's become. Uh, no, nobody, in, in a community radio station, nobody gets glory, you know, as far as that's concerned. It's just a lot of work. But the, and the rewards aren't to an individual, but rather the rewards are to a community. Uh, and, and, and to think uh, that, uh, uh, that one could go into this just to make money or, or, or fame or notoriety for himself or for a board of directors uh, is repugnant. Well, that's what's funny to me is that when I was approached to work with the radio station, it kind of was, I was doing all the giving and they were doing the taking, and it just wasn't a fair trade. And, and so I kind of politely turned it down at the time. But, you know, back to the whole antenna thing, that's what kind of has driven the controversy right now. And, and I th I'm with you. I think there needs to be an open investigation of how they got the antenna up there in the first place. Um, I did reach out to Sean Wright, uh, Antioch's mayor, last Thursday. He said that there was no handshake agreement, that there was no... Um, you know, approval at that time. Instead, Sean had approached the city attorney 
to say, hey, what can we do? And the attorney basically said, stay out of it. There's yeah. no agreement. So from that point, how it got on the antenna, Sean, oh, and <laughs> Sean and says he had nothing to do with it. And so both Sean and Kevin may be completely immune from any liabilities, but I think it's worthy of getting to the, the bottom of it and getting an answer. Yeah, and, and when I when I reached out to Chris in email, he, he basically said that it was a disgruntled employee that basically took it down. That doesn't really jive with what was written in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, he said, she said type of thing. So it'll be really interesting how it plays out. Um, anything else you guys want to add? I would, I, I would like to also make a request that the books for the Friends of Oakley and the books, if they exist for KLSN, be made available to myself and Tony. Um, and we will be putting into written form that request. So yes. I want to see where the money was spent and who received the money. Yes. Uh, uh, there is an FCC rule that, that, that talks about the openness of, of books, uh, of, of, of broadcast records and the like, that every radio station is supposed to have. Any interested party should be able to take a look at the records of the radio station, to the operating logs, uh, and, and to, to all of this. Uh, I, uh, I'm concerned uh, basing, uh, in listening to KLSN, and, and I did, uh, I, uh, while, while it was on the air, uh, uh, with respect to station IDs, with respect to the emergency action uh, system, uh, the emergency alert system uh, that they're supposed to be broadcasting announcements for, that they operated actually without uh, for a period of time uh, when they first got started in clear violation of FCC regulation. Uh, according to their engineer uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, spoke about that in the newspaper. I want transparency. I want this to be a community operation that everybody in the community not only knows about but is able to participate in. Uh, and I want it to be the voice that it was originally uh, and I think uh, uh, very, very deservingly set out to be. So what you kind of just said was interesting to me. And could the FCC technically take away the channel? Um, that's what I'm afraid of. Uh, uh, We've already contacted the FCC uh, about uh, about KLSN's operations. Uh, the the difficulty is uh, sometimes the FCC does with does withdraw licensing from stations like this, uh, and the concern that I have is that uh, we know that there's not going to be any further uh, awards of LPFMs throughout the country, if, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. The FCC has said this. What I'm afraid of is if if their license is removed or if action is taken against their license. Uh, that there will not be another radio station in Oakley. There will not be another radio station in Brentwood. Uh, and, and so, reasonably speaking, what needs to take place right now, I think uh, the, the present board of directors needs to recognize uh, that this is, this is far beyond their capability to control, that this needs to be turned back over to a responsible group in the community, a responsible board of directors in the community to, to um, uh, correct uh, what the FCC uh, may or may not find on this, uh, to, uh, to take a look at the operations in detail, and we have national consultants that will do that uh, to make sure that if we can get this station back on the air, that it gets back on the air in a proper way, consistent with FCC regulations and consistent with the design that it originally had. And for you, Gary, um, I would just, I would like to make just my last and closing point is I want to make it perfectly clear to the community that with respect to all the comments that have been made on Facebook and any public media outlets, the articles that have been in the paper, we do not want this radio station to fail. We want the radio station to be up, running, in a community-based fashion, the way that Dr. Tony Van Gore had initially proposed. And uh, final question, Assemblyman Frazier helped bring it to the Friends of Oakley. Is he aware of what's going on now, and is he involved in trying to rectify the issues? Um, I have made Jim Frazier aware of our um, avenues, what we are currently doing. Um, what he is doing on his own, I am not sure of. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, coming on. I know it's kind of a difficult topic, a very passionate topic for you. It hasn't been an easy four and a half years not doing enough. this. Um, you know, I, ju I just think what you guys did in the very beginning was very admirable, very passionate. Just, it was all about the community and not for personal gain. So I really appreciate all your hard effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, Mike Burkholder, Contra Cost Today. Please like, subscribe, follow. We'll see you again next time. Take care.